Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at what I keep in this Sis Combi right here. But first, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button down there, ring that bell, and let's get into the video. You know, here recently we did a video on that other sortainer, and it was the three drawer sustainer. This is actually called a Sis Combi, and this is the unit that I have sitting on top of the three drawer sustainer in the truck. So, what makes this a Sis Combi is a combination sustainer. You have both the open top, which I believe is the size of a Sis 2, and you also have the drawer in the bottom. Now, this drawer I have made into primarily my bits and things that I need quickly out of the side of the truck. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop it out and just show you guys the kind of things that are in there. There you go. There you go. Okay. What we have right here in the front, I have multiple chucks for my Festool drills. There's three Centratex and a Jacobs chuck here. That's really nice for if I'm swapping between a lot of bits. I like to have a few chucks there for those drills because like if I'm installing cabinet hardware, I can put my drill for drilling the pilot holes. I can put my bit set for driving the uh, fasteners for it. Everything can be lined out with the bit already installed and then you just quick connect the chucks on and off for whichever one you need and you only need one drill to run that way. Then next to it here, I have a whole thing of the longer impact bits. There's mostly DeWalt's in here, but my actual all-time favorites are the Makita Gold. Those are just fantastic bits. You almost can't wear them out. <clears throat> then next to that, I have nut drivers. These are all magnetic nut drivers, usually the DeWalt self, the ones you can pull forward and clean them. I use a lot of those. So that's what's in that spot. Then behind it, more Centrotech uh, bit holders. And there are the snap, snap ring ones and the regular insert ones. And next to that, I have one that has replacement bits for my uh, Festool bit holders. And those bit holders are over on this side. Let's see if I can pull one out and show you what that looks like. Ah, oh, they're right here. Yes, there we go. They look like this right here. They just have a holder and with the size of the drill bit on it and all you have to have is an Allen key. You release it there and you can put in your new bit. So if you hit something and ruin the bit, you don't have to replace the entire thing. You just replace the actual bit portion. Here in the center, this is all oscillating tool blades, an entire thing of them right here. There's ones for the fine, uh, for the Vecturo, and there are some for my DeWalt. I keep them all right there. Back in the back, I have a uh, eccentric chuck for Festool. This other container here has all my step bits. There's three different sizes of step bits down in there. And then just lots of kinds of, fa of fastener drivers, all kinds of bits. Long ones, short ones, every, every conceivable thing. Instead of carrying a bunch of like the little DeWalt cases and all that kind of stuff that just takes up a ton of room for just a few bits, I have them all put in here where I know what type driver is in each one. Over on this side, these, I have two packs of these because sometimes I need two different sizes set up in two different drills. These are fantastic little Brad Point bits. They're Festool Centrotech and they snap right into Centratech. They're a little short, they have a barb on the end. Boy, these are my go-to bit for installing cabinet hardware. They're just absolutely perfect. So I think they're around 40 something dollars for a set of five of them, five different sizes. They come in eight, six, five, four, and three millimeter. So anyway, if you need those, those are a fantastic little setup. Over here, flashlight, uh, surefire, of course, uh, snap ring pliers, lots of different just miscellaneous drill bits. I have certain sizes that I like for drilling out locks on rentals and stuff. Keep those there. Nail punch, a quick square card reader for customers to pay me is right there in the front. A few paddle bits in there. Ah, that's about it for that drawer. But 
Comes out to be fairly heavy, but it's almost everything you need as far as a quick grab set for drill stuff. I do have my Centratech installer set in the drawers in the back of the truck, but this is just a good instant grab for almost everything you need. And that drawer, of course, if you wanted it, you can just take it out and run it right into the job with you. And uh, then it snaps right back in here when you go back to your truck. So you don't have to take in the whole set. And in the top, of course, is my router stuff. This has my door hinge jig. And yes, this is a Ryobi on my truck, I know. Anyway, then I did get a Linux doorknob drilling set. The hole saws and everything for that are in here as well. The regular base for my router, my DeWalt 20 volt router is in there. And then a bunch of extensions for the bits. That's just where I keep them because some of these, well, they get fairly long. I like to have an ability to get through some deep walls if I have to. And I keep one little Stanley Bailey chisel in there. I believe it's a half inch just for cleaning up anything when I'm doing hinges and doors. And of course, a little thing of Gorilla Glue. Never know when you'll need that doing the same type of thing. So this is kind of just my little setup for, you know, when you get into a house, you got a lockout, you got something you got to fix. I also have a draw bolt jig in here, and this is called flip bolt jig. And I think, yes, it's from Fast Cap. So your router, you can use your router to make these little dog bone style holes, and then you can put your bolts in here to pull things together. Like uh, for mica countertops, anywhere where you need a hidden fastener that you can just take a couple of wrenches and pull it together, your router can route these quick little dog bones out and you know get it done. You got even one where you can do a single end at a time if you need to get in there and do it. But that's been super handy to have. So it just lives in here, doesn't take up any space. Up on the ceiling of the box, I put some neodymium magnets, the rare earth, and I keep, you know, sometimes a couple of whatever I'm using at the time, usually just door hinge parts and whatever I'm routing in. But anyway, that's the box I use for just when I go into a rental, it's kind of the same as the other box we talked about the other day. This has most of what I need quickly on the side of one side of my truck. I don't have to mess with getting into my deck system in the back or it or pulling my trailer. A lot of this is designed to minimize the amount of times that I have to pull my big shop trailer with me. This makes it a lot quicker, lighter, easier to unload, especially if I want to take a quick trip with the family somewhere. I can unload the back seat of my truck in about 10 minutes and we can turn it back into a vehicle where we can all, you know, if they want to go with me to uh, pick up supplies in another state or something, it's not a big problem. Sometimes we buy some of our material up in Kansas or and things and, and family sometimes likes to go when it's a decent little trip. So it's nice to use sustainers, be able to get everything out of your truck quickly and get set up. So that's what I do. Thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Drop me a comment down there with uh, what kind of setup you're using for this type of work. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.